Good evening, Gloucester. Good evening. I think I'm coming home, really, because all my father's family came from Bishop's Cleeve, and all my mother's family uh, from Armondsbury, uh, which was in Gloucestershire in those days, not Avon or Bristol, or whatever they call it now. Indeed, my grandfather's house is underneath the RAC tower at the M4, M5 interchange, <laughs> and was compulsorily purchased in 1960. So I have a, long, a strong link with this area. Uh, you've heard my background in the Navy. We voted to leave the EU after four years of subjugation. So when I talked to Remainers, I asked them, can you explain why a trading bloc needs a flag, an anthem, several presidents, a parliament in two places, an army and a defense union, and insists on member states resigning their own sovereignty. I, 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 I haven't had a satisfactory answer yet. More money. <laughs> More money, yes. We've been consistently told, haven't we, that we're stupid, that we're ignorant, that we're racist, and we didn't know what we were voting for. Parla Parliament has failed to implement the referendum results and any of those, any of you who are watching the television this afternoon in Parliament, it was awful. Running the country has come to a complete standstill. The shambles of delivering Brexit, or if that's what they call it, of not delivering Brexit, has been stark. It's been nationally embarrassing. It's been internationally damaging. When a, and this is an important point. When a democracy refuses to implement the results of its own democratic voting system, it ceases to be a democracy. <laughs> so why has Nigel Farage created the Brexit party? Well, politics is broken. There's a complete failure of the current party politics in UK, and particularly so to those who gave their lives in two world wars and the more recent conflicts for our freedom and upholding democracy. And I can't resist just saying a few words on defence, as you'd expect from me. The first duty of any government is the defense of the realm. End of story. And right now, there's a scandal going on right now. The Downing Street so-called secret cell, led by the cabinet secretary and Sir Alan Duncan in the Foreign Office, has been shown to have been betrayed British national security and to have deliberately put our key security alliances in peril. Mrs. May has signed up to the UK to an interlocking sequence of complex and obscure UK and EU documents. And if you look at the Veterans for Britain website, you'll see all the evidence there which we've been sucking out for the last four years. And I should say that I'm a director of Re Veterans for Britain. And we were doing this before the referendum even happened. These documents have exposed in several ways but they have not been subject to any parliamentary scrutiny whatsoever, not even by the House of Commons Defence Select Committee. And I heard only yesterday that the argument is being made that this is under the Official Secrets Act. What a load of nonsense. <laughs> the current intention is to lock the UK by international treaty into a vassal state role as a rule taker without any say immediately after leaving us leaving the EU. We're turning our backs on 70 years of the Five Eyes Intelligence Agreement with the USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. And this is a crucial 
part of keeping us safe. It's not in the UK's interest to stay in these EU agreements, and we effectively would not have left the EU. We should cooperate, certainly, but we should not integrate with our European friends. NATO provides us with that integ integration and has done safely for over 70 years now. And do you know that part of this, they even want to try and suck our independent nuclear deterrent into this. And we're not going to allow it to happen. <laughs> it's also high time that EU nations in NATO should pay their dues. It really is quite remarkable that only Estonia, Greece, Poland and the UK, yes Greece, Poland and the UK are the only one who pay the prescribed 2% of GDP. The only ones. Isn't that awful? So let's get back to the Brexit party. We're not specifically looking for a protest vote, although we may well get one but opening up a huge opportunity to put people, and especially young people, first. <laughs> the Brexit party is not just about leaving the EU. It's for changing politics for good, and it's about democracy. So what do we want? No fancy manifesto. We've seen enough of those, haven't we, with the Conservative and the Labour manifestos that they don't follow. We are quite straightforward. We want to leave the EU on WTO rules. Everybody seems to be frightened, and I don't understand why. Project Fear again. WTO rules is what we want. And we want our elected MEPs, many of which, and we were all together in Olympia last night, some really talented negotiators, businessmen, people who've been around and done things and achieved things, we want to have a significant role in future negotiations. And ultimately as well, we, will, we want to leave the single market and the customs union. The so-called withdrawal agreement, or May's deal, whatever you like to call it, we didn't ask for a deal, we asked to leave. We told them to leave, exactly. But it's not, it's not whatever you like to call it, it's more like a surrender document you sign at the end of a war. And it's worse, because staying in, it keeps us in with no voice, no vote, and no veto. So I'm extremely hopeful the House of Commons will get rid of it this week or next week or whenever it appears for the fourth time. And, and looking at today... <laughs> and another important point. The Brexit party is not going away. Yeah. This is about far more now than just leaving the European Union. Our job is, is far bigger than that and just campaigning for Brexit. We have to transform the political landscape and sweep aside a system that serves only itself. If, if Parliament decides to revoke Article 50, as you hear many people talking about today, then the Brexit party would win the next general election and reverse it. We will be aiming to fight every seat in the land in the next general election. And that may be closer than we think. We'll be seeking major reform of both Houses of Parliament, the civil service, and a new order of how we are democratically governed. So, 
If you are unhappy with the status quo, by the fact that you're here tonight, I suspect you are, you're a Remainer or a Lever like me and my colleagues here, be optimistic, take a chance, do something positive, make a stand, do what your heart tells you is right, and vote for the Brexit party tomorrow. And finally, as us sub mariners say, deep down, you know it makes sense. <laughs> Thank you.